Hi, everyone. Welcome to the TimingResearch.com crowd forecast news for June 6, 2022. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and this is episode number 345. So my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of Timing Research, and you should be seeing my, my uh, charts right now. And uh, today I've arranged for Simon Klein and Sonny Harris to be back. They were here as guests a few weeks ago, so uh, it'll be good to get an update on what they have to say. And the option professor is back to moderate, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, thanks a lot, and thanks to everybody for being here. We had a big market open run-up, and now we've gone into a bit of a fade here. So we'll get an idea of what uh, our guests are thinking about the market, not only today, but also what's coming up. Uh, before we get started, uh, let's uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, Sonny Harris, uh, please, a little background on yourself and uh, what's going on at Money Mentor. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. Uh, Money Mentor has been on the web since 1995, and I offer just about anything you can imagine wanting to know as a trader. It's a big resource guide, if nothing else. And then I do have my Sunny Bands indicator and lots of other software available there. I do a Sunny Side of the Street free newsletter every Sunday night and a free live trading room on Tuesday mornings. So just go to Money Mentor dot com and register and you'll get the invitation sounds great and uh, you'll get into your sunny bands a little later in the broadcast right i'd be happy to okay perfect and simon a little background on yourself and again what's happening at your company as well okay so um we're a trading education business and we primarily focus on teaching traders how to read the market professionally using no indicators just price action and also how to run a successful trading business, which is the framework and process you need to go through on a day-by-day, trade-by-trade basis. And that includes how to develop your own trading plan and strategies which fit your personality and lifestyle, because it's not a one strategy fits all. And just because someone else can trade a strategy successfully doesn't mean that you'll be able to do it too. It has to be fitting to you. So we go back to first principles by teaching people how to read the market using price action and then how to develop themselves as a trader. And I found over the years that that's actually worked out really well, especially for traders that have been trying to be successful now for quite a long time, some 20 years plus, and they finally get this training and framework and they go on to become successful traders, which uh, is a very big thank because they don't want to look back at 20 years of trading and, and feel that being a failure. So it's very important that these people these traders finally succeed. So uh, that's what I've been focusing on primarily the past probably four years on um, traders that have been trading for many years without success. They've tried everything and nothing seems to be working for them. And finally, this works for them. So that's quite fulfilling to see them go on to become successful finally. Sure. Absolutely. Um, We start off every Monday with uh, a question, which is, the S&P opened today at uh, 41.35, and that's on the SPX. And it went up to uh, 41.68, now it's below that. Between now and Friday, uh, what do you guys think that the 41.35 on S&P will be from today's opening? Will it be higher, lower, and uh, or fairly unchanged? And what is your confidence level in a percentage basis, obviously, Anything over 50-50 is uh, more likely than not. Uh, we'll start with Sonny. Sonny, what do you think about 4135 on the S&P? You want to throw, you, you, you want to throw uh, the Sonny's up, the Sunny bands up there, get an idea? Sure, I'd be happy to. You need to let me share? Yeah. It's okay, David, right? Yeah, yeah you should be able to now. Yeah. Since we're not exactly guessers around here, we're using some type of analysis, right? There you go. So on this green chart, you can see my sunny bands on the daily of the S&P. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six bars that have been sitting right here, right above this purple and gold line that are in the center. That's my dynamic moving average. Uh And it looks to me like we're going to go right up there to this 42.26. So that's above 41.35. So I'm about... I'm about 60, maybe 70% that that will go up to that inner band. Right. Uh, we'll probably lose momentum at that point and fall back down again. But I do think that's where we're going. 
You're really on a lot of support there. So uh, where would we put our line in the sand? It looks like about 4090 or? Let's draw a horizontal line. We got, I go back to the left and don't look at the right and there we go. So looking back at these prices only, right it goes across right to where we're just stuck there. So uh, this like thing is now trading. Yeah, this thing is now trading under forty one forty three. Above forty one forty three would be very constructive, according to what you're looking at. Exactly, and I think and then, it's going then, up to right there. Yeah, no, it looks like that could happen. But uh, what about on the um, give up side? Uh, where would it be uh, throwing in the towel on the underneath? I was trying to figure that. Uh, would it be? Well, if it if it goes down below this bar, the lower this bar, about forty fifty, forty sixty. Yeah, forty fifty six, right there. Yeah. So, so there's a good, that's a good one there. There's a good oh, window. Right. Yeah, there's a good window there for uh, to keep an eye on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like I say, it was trading above forty one forty three. So it certainly established it can do it. It just uh, didn't like the fact that I don't think that the 10 year note started trading above three percent again. And that's kind yeah. of like uh, that's kind of like tear gas into a bull's party. You know what I mean? <laughs> When's the next uh, supposed entries coming? Uh, next week is they're going to hike, but I mean, you know, this, uh, what they're going to do now is so lagging. It's a joke. Uh, I think, yeah. you know, what people are trying to, you know, I mean, these guys have hardly hiked at all and everyone's talking pivot and when it's going to end and how far it's going to go. I mean, you know, yeah, well, we're, still, a, you know we're still at historic lows, but it's just like, you know, people, it's an unpleasant thing when they tighten money and credit and like any other unpleasant thing in life, people want to know how long it's going to go on. And, you know, it's like a, a snowstorm. How long is it going to go on and when's it going to be over? You know, when does the, when does the pain stop? Yeah. And as far as this particular situation, the answer uh, the Fed is probably trying to issue is uh, we have really no idea right. because, you know, how the data comes in is going to depend how far we're going to go. And the data exactly. is certainly not rolling over as far as uh, the prices are concerned. So anyway, um, let's turn over to Simon. And Simon, what do you uh, what do you got you going? Want the as far as... Yeah, or, I'll take or, the screen. Yeah, let or maybe he can share his own screen if he has a yeah, there you go. Yeah, let me see if I can get this your screen. own uh, right recipe, now. you know, Simon, your own recipe. Yeah, let's see if I can get the right screen here. Let's share my screen. It, it keeps renaming my screens. So let's see. Yeah, and while that's coming right up, now. I just wanted to add uh, it seems like we we're got. coming into uh -huh. a big uh, juncture of bulls and bears because you know the the bulls have a story that this month of June is going to be a big turn up and we're going to be seeing significant upside because a lot of the things that are problematic right now are starting are going to be starting to go away. So this is, I think, a very key month of June, because uh, if it is a big turn, you certainly wouldn't want to miss it. Uh, and then, of course, the bears have their own story that uh, people have no idea how high these interest rates are going and uh, and how slow the economy has to go for the in, for the uh, inflation to come down. So you got two fantastic stories that are kind of hitting ahead here in the month of June. So, uh, Simon, what's your take? Do you, do you see my screen with the minis? Yep, sure. See my cursor moving around? I hope I'm showing the right one, yeah. Okay, um, so at the moment, it's kind of undecided. I call this decision-making. We're trapped here, as you can see. Make this bigger so you can see it. We have supply up here and demand, which was once supply here, and the market's just moving in this area. Now, what should happen, what should have happened over here when we pivoted is we should have pushed up into this area but the fact is the market went up and kind of came back down again today and uh, we're selling i mean it depends how we close today but uh, we may run up again i mean we're in this range over here so i think to get clearer we need to break out of this range and at the moment it's 50 50 i mean base if i go up a time frame on the weekly chart, this could go up. But the last time you see over here, we went up as well, and then we came down. So this could be an up and then continuation down because if we look at the monthly chart, we're, we're not in an uptrend anymore. We broke the uptrend over here, yeah? So um, these moves up from demand zones over here likely gonna take us lower in the bigger picture until they don't. And then we know we've got the bottom and we're going up. So uh, yeah, that's my take on it. So. You know, 50-50, it could go either either way. There's no um, there's no definitive edge here in either direction. Yeah, it's in the middle of the field and it could break to either goal. Yeah, yeah. We just trade what, I mean, I think you have to just trade what's happening at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, the buying into strength, uh, you know, has not been the most fabulous result uh, sometimes, you know, because 
we get a fabulous move up to 46.31 and it comes all the way back down. Another move up, come back down. Right now, uh, do you think last week's highs are important, you guys? Uh, I was thinking, you know, one of my resistance points is around 41.80. And uh, I, I think that's not a bad uh, line in the sand. If you start taking out 41.80, you got to get, yeah, get on the train at that point, 41.80, something like that. This is the uh, E-mini, this is the E-mini though, right? Yeah, this is the E-mini. So. Yeah, I was, I was referring to cash. But anyway, it's, it's close. Yeah, so I'm saying, you know, we're kind of in this sideways chop at the moment. Yeah. On the on the daily chart, at least. And you can see also the four hour is kind of chopping. Well, anyway, let's uh, get into some of the other things uh, that we've got cooking here, um, because, again, uh, China opened up and Starbucks opened all their restaurants. So that's viewed as a very big positive. And um, again, on the bull side. You know, they're basically uh, saying that everything's been discounted and the valuation has been discounted and the job reports will weaken and inflation will weaken. Inventories are rising. So you're going to get a lot of discounting so that the inflation monkey is definitely going to roll over. And as that happens, and if these yields don't have to go up much further, the backdrop for the next six months is going to be very positive. And that's where you open up the door for all these guys who are saying, you know, 4,800 or higher by the end of the year. So, you know, do you have any um, uh, bull or bear uh, prejudice right now, um, uh, Sonny? I think we're going to go up a little bit here, probably to the inner sunny band, upper sunny band, if not to the upper outer sunny band. And then I think we're going to go down some more. I don't know what the news is going to be. I don't know what's going to make it go down. I don't think it's likely to be interest rates unless they do a 1.0 all of a sudden on us. But I don't think that we're through going down yet. Yeah, I was looking at, I was hearing on uh, Bloomberg about uh, airfares to Europe, uh, business class from uh, like uh, New York to uh, Paris. And mm -hmm. they um, have been fluctuating between uh, uh, $5,000 and $20,000. Yeah. So what, things about are for us, what about for us normal folks who don't do business class? What about just ordinary class? Well, I'm sure it's still elevated. I'm sure they're not giving them away. But yeah, the bottom but, line is, is that there's a lot of volatility in pricing right now, it seems like, yeah. because it's basically these guys are saying, we'll price this at what the market will bear. And if they really yeah. want to, if they really want to travel this summer and they want to go on those vacations they've never been on in two years, they will pay. I think that's the average, and, the average price I've paid to go to Paris. Now, I've been to Paris 13 times and the average price I've paid is a, between 900 and 1200 for just right. not business class, just ordinary. And that's from California, though. Yeah. Yeah, which is another, you know, five hour from New York. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another five hundred dollars on top. Yeah. So, but it just, uh, it's just it's 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 kind of telling me a little bit about inflation. In other mm -hmm. words, uh, you know, it's very hard to bring inflation down if everyone is working and they're getting raises. Everybody's out spending money on leisure and travel. Um, you know. Uh, well, not not to mention groceries and six dollar fifty cent gasoline in California. Yeah. I saw a number eight. What would that be in like Malibu or some place that only has one it's, gas station? It's up in Northern California in a place. Oh, more like San gas. Francisco. Yeah, yeah, to the left of San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, you're looking basically that there could still be some downside risk. I think so. Yeah. Simon, so, what's your what, what's your kind of take? I know you know we're looking at things at all different time frames, but this is really just an opinion thing. Um, do you, do you have any kind of an opinion on how uh, this uh, next few months, you know, will it turn to the upside uh, gigantically like uh, the Tom Lees of the world and all these other guys are saying? How about how low uh, can we go? Well, yeah. I mean, okay. uh, you want to you finish up with that? Yeah. How low can we go? Yeah. I, I, I oh, go on. Go ahead, Sorry. Simon. No, I, yeah. I um, don't pay too much attention to, um, anything else besides the charts. So yeah. my decision-making is based purely on reading what's happening on the charts. Right. So at the and, moment, and bigger picture is still going down. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that would, you know, because uh, the Fed has a mandate to bring the inflation down. And uh, rather than, uh, you know, guessing when they're going to stop hiking when they haven't hardly started, um, it seems to be to, a good idea to keep an eye an eye on the labor numbers and on the inflation numbers and on uh, you know things that uh, would make it easier for them to not have to hike very much. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
we'll have to see. Um, are there can I show you another screen if you want to see how low I think it can go? Sure. Okay. There we go. So this is the E-mini on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. I just threw some Fibonacci lines on there from left to right. And it looks we're going, to me, it looks we're going to 3763 minimum. If not, on down here to 3464. 3465 right in there to that lower outer sunny band mm -hmm. and that would put the pe ratio in the 14 to 16 range which is which really what, yeah which makes sense so there's some economic uh, numerical reasoning behind that yeah. target yeah. now you see where my cursor is right now i think it's going to take that long to get there however that long is it looks like october yeah and october, october historically has been a rough racket oh, right yeah. oh yeah we need yeah. to take october off the calendar yeah, October uh, is a, a Halloween month for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, Simon, are there any stocks? Uh, like, can you do an analysis on Amazon? They just split 20 for one. Um, I know, isn't that great? Yeah, I, I, front, run, I front run that when it was in the 2000, uh, a little bit over 2000 area. I picked some up, figure 20 to one. If you're ever going to buy Amazon, that's the time to do it. Well, if you didn't know that was happening and you thought you had Amazon at a thousand something and you woke up this morning and saw it at 124, you'd be real excited, wouldn't you? Well, you got to read the paper and turn on the TV <laughs> if you didn't know that was happening. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. anyway, that that is a good thing. But now the cat's out of the bag and it really is not following through tremendously today. It it's was not. up nicely. It's typically so, so bullish. Yeah. You know, but I think it's likely to go on down right to that level, which is like 100 even. That's what I was and thinking. I, yeah. And I think it's just going to bounce right back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying this from is the time that, to yeah. almost 200. Yeah. But if you buy it at 130 and it goes down to 100, you'll probably be too disgusted to buy anything. So if you keep your yeah. powder dry, 100 will look like um, a canteen of water in the desert as opposed to another nightmare. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would I would be I'm going to add to mine at right there. 106. Yeah. Because this has definitely been a discounted stock and they do have AWS, which is really a big moneymaker for them. So um and the logistics of that company cannot be uh, repeated so what's excuse my ignorance what's aws um uh, amazon web services oh, it's of course. cloud yeah. and all that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff yeah yeah right. so um people don't understand that's a big part of their business because all, all they think about is getting nikes and uh, something else sent to them on you know in the mail yeah but um, even, even places like google uses aws yeah no exactly simon do you have a feeling on amazon because uh, obviously uh, it's a big stock in the news today. Okay, I can take this. Can I take the screen again? And while you're doing it, let's look at Google. Share now. Yeah. yeah, let's look at Google too, because I'm going to try to play the same game with Google because they're going twenty for one next month. Right, I'm, and I'm holding okay, on to you that. See, one you see Amazon did. here? Yes. Okay, so again, I don't have any zones drawn on this, but. Uh, this area is critical and this area, like around where we where we moved up from, critical. So again, this is still a downward moving market in line with the rest of the market, mm -hmm. but happened to move up from this kind of zone here. Yeah. This was, you know, so we kind of partly up, but not we could go higher and we could pull back down again. So right. again, kind of if we look on the bigger picture. Um yeah, could go either way from here, but it is starting to move up. And I guess it depends on the wider market as well, even though this kind of makes up a large part of the wider market. So yeah, it's um, kind of sitting around, if we look on the daily chart, kind of this area hasn't managed to go above here yet. So, and then we've got potential, if we go above this area, we could run up. Yeah. So uh, what was the other one you want to look at? Google. Uh, Google. Yeah. Now, Google, I'd like to see come way down again, just like Amazon did uh, three weeks ago, because that's the best time to take your bite when it's way down and they're going to go 20 for one, you know. So this has still got more kind of downside. Yeah. Like if we look over, if we look over here, we could come down to, say, around 2000. Right. And that's exactly yeah. what I'm thinking. Two thousand, which and would that's a hundred. That's a hundred bucks. Back to hundred again. Yeah, that's a hundred bucks split. Just like uh, we're thinking, that Amazon potentially could, if it got if it got hit, could go down the same number. So, 
Maybe a hundred, a hundred bucks for Amazon and Google for the next 10 years. Isn't the worst place to take a bite, huh? <laughs> yeah. That'd be a great place to get in. I think, you know, cause you haven't had many chances on these stocks. If you go back to the longer term chart, you have a longer term chart. Uh, yeah. There, Simon? I chart. mean, it, this is not exactly chart. something that goes on sale all the time, right? Yeah. So, right. I mean, it's been going up forever. Yeah. And, uh, Last time it was at 100 was in 2004. Yeah. And they call these this companies ones that have a moat around them, right? Because you can't replicate Amazon very easily and you couldn't replicate the search engine. Look what a Microsoft has done with Bing, that uh, yeah. abject failure, right? Right. So, you know, you're not messing around with some uh, company that doesn't know what they're doing. No, Google oh, definitely knows well. what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the bottom sunny bands on that one right now is at 1837. And the, the inner one? sunny band is at 2120. So that's why I think it's going to 2000. Could I bring up some different subjects that I've, um, you know, Absolutely. that I know are, are happening in the news and get your opinions on them? Uh, yeah. Obviously, the big thing today is, um, and I talked about this in my uh, newsletter last week, is uh, China's opening up. Uh, you know, Starbucks didn't open up all their restaurants because it's closing down. So last week, I knew that this uh, was was opening. And obviously, we all know it's going to open at some time. It's not going to remain shut forever. So anyway, um um, what, what does that oh. mean to a, a couple of things? One would be, I'm going to name three of them that come to mind. Uh, FXI, which is the big caps of China. KWeb, which is their tech. And then let's throw in Las Vegas Sands, because you got to figure these people, I mean, I know I live in Las Vegas. <laughs> when we could uh, start traveling, this place went nuts. So if, uh, if they're going to go back to Macau and go nuts, maybe uh, Las Vegas Sands has something. So let's look at those three things as a possible opportunity for China. And uh, what's, we're, the, what's the symbol for Las Vegas Sands? Uh, LVS and then FXI and KWeb. Got them. Because these babies have been beaten down. And they're all around 30 ish. I've got FS, FXI just going sideways forever. Yeah, well, of course, they're All closed. The I mean, they, they, they physically taped the departments closed. I guess they had like yeah. duct tape over your door or something. <laughs> yeah. only, only in China. Right? Yeah. Well, you know, another interesting one while, while we're talking about because we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago as well, was uh, the yen, which is now just made today all time lows again. Yeah, I mean, that, we said uh, the move up. We said the move up a few weeks ago. I remember, I think I said the move up will probably get sold. Oh, yeah. And uh, it did. <laughs> and now we're at all time lows again today. So well, they're, they, the they are the only, they, yeah, they're the only ones not uh, raising rates. The entire planet's raising rates. Isn't there a bunch of central banks from India to Australia to the ECB this week? Plus, next week, we've got the Fed. And uh, even Brazil is uh, um, abandoning any ideas of cutting rates. So, when you got the whole world raising rates and you're over there with these negative interest rates in Japan, your currency's got to get whacked, doesn't it? I would Pretty think. I know. Were you talking about the yen in Japan or the yuan in China? No, he's talking about the Japanese yen, which is around a 20 year low on the dollar. Yeah. OK. But uh, yeah, let's throw those other ones up to see if there's an opportunity. Uh, let's look at the uh, FXI, which is the uh, uh, China big cap. And, you know, do we see it? Uh, I mean, uh, you want to put sunny bands up there or something like that? Sure, and, and, I'd not, yeah, I'd like, I'd like you know, you guys to put your technical analysis on these three things and see if there's something happening. Because according to what David was just showing, it looks like it's going up. Well, this one, as I said, is just going, going sideways since, uh, well, there's the COVID crash. No, there's the real estate crash right there, 07, yeah. 08. Yeah. And then just sideways up and down in a channel forever. Yeah. We've got... If I go put a horizontal line on here, we've just got a channel that goes just like that. So it looks early, but it looks like it could but be near a low line. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. may be early, but it's going to go back up to the top of that channel. If history's yeah. any guide here. Yeah. And then this KWeb. Uh, KWeb, oh boy. Well, this is on the sunny bands and my dynamic moving average. This is a buy signal right here. Okay. Yeah, it was red below there, red below the yeah. below the lower outer band, and then went up within the lower outer band and the lower inner band. That's a buy signal. So I don't even know what this is, 
K-Web something. I don't uh, that's know a, no, it's K-Web. all, uh, uh, it's a um, uh, ETF of all the China internet companies. So, mm-hmm. you know, well, obviously, you know, they, they all been hit because of a lot of, um, you know, tough, tough action on the uh, companies themselves. And you know, also, of- um, what do you call it? Um, um, and also obviously shutting down the economy. So obviously, what would you expect the prices to do if you, um, you know, um, investigate all the companies and put charges on them, and then you also shut down your nation? You hear your stocks and are going to go down, but that's not. What's, the- what's going to happen when ta- when uh, China invades Taiwan? Well, you know, that's a that's a big um, crystal ball thing. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't bet pot Mm -hmm. on that. But uh, if it happens, obviously, that would be a negative. That would be a very big negative. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I do. You know, I don't want to be a doomsayer, but I do think that's going to happen. Well, like I say, if it does, then you certainly wouldn't want to touch this stuff, probably. How about um, um, how about uh, the other one? uh, LVS. And another sideways channel right there. Uh-huh. And it's, see this low back over here before the, the big up in the crash? Right. This low corresponds right there to where we are right now. It needs right. to go just a tiny bit lower to hit that. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think it's going to go on. So it would it would go down to hit uh, right about 30 uh-huh. and then pop back up to 62, 63, 64. Yeah, I think we have hit 30 already. So maybe that's already been exhausted. You don't know. Yeah, we don't know for sure. Yeah. And how about um, the Las Vegas Sands? Oh, this is Las Vegas Sands. Yeah. And uh, one last one that hit the news today is DD, D-I-D-I. And that is a company that does uh, ride sharing and stuff. And they were in kind of trouble, but they kind of, I don't know if it's any, I haven't even looked at it myself, but is there anything there? Mm, well, it has a buy signal on it on my dynamic moving average. It started right there back at this yellow dot. That's uh-huh. the buy signal. And it goes up and then it, it went up from like a oh, dollar a quarter uh-huh. and today up around three. So that's a pretty good move. And you can see we've got a gold bar right there. So that's all encouraging. Well, what they've done is I guess they have put the app back on people's phones. Uh, they had made them take it off. And um, I guess when you have six billion people, even if a certain percentage need a ride, it's got to be a good business, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I've I've been using Uber. It's cheaper than driving. Yeah, and Uber and uh, Didi seem to be the two uh, lead dogs uh, as far as uh, that game's concerned. And Didi, isn't that one of those crazy birds in Australia? I don't know. I thought it was a doo doo dodo. Dodo. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, it looks like uh, from the from the stuff you're showing is uh, this stuff looks like it's still in the lower uh, echelon but seems like it's trying to emerge. That, would not, that wouldn't be a, a stretch calling it like that, right? Right. And, yep. and you know, it, this thing could go right to there. So seven twenty seven dollars from $3, that'd be pretty good. Double your money. Not, not better than a sharp stick or whatever they say, right? Token the eye with a sharp stick. That's I think the one. I'm going to buy me some of that. All right, let's see um, how um, uh, Simon's analysis goes through these things. And uh, oh, one last thing before we leave, another China thing is um, a copper is going through the roof and uh, uh, FCX and SCCO are two copper companies. FCX, Freeport Mining? Uh, Freeport McMoran, yeah. Freeport or something. McMoran or however you pronounce it. And that looks pretty good. When we, when we drop here, we hit the lower outer sunny band, we break back through this dynamic movers, moving average and continue on up to the upper band. That's a very bullish sign. And we're right now at this attractor across the, across the horizontal line there. So if it breaks out of that, I think we're going on up to 51. We got to wait for this breakout, but on, on the breakout of 43, I would, well, not even 43, on the breakout of well, yeah, 43. Breakout of 43, that's a good buy place for that. I and, don't like to buy things when they're going down. I'd right. rather pay a little more and know yeah. that it's actually going up. Yeah, you want momentum. You don't, you don't want to catch falling knives. I don't like that, no. And one last one that uh, David actually mentioned, which is uh, COPX. Um, <laughs> and he did this um, a week or two ago when it was very low. So this was a very good, uh, a very good hint from him. Yeah, that's the ETF of uh, about 40 different copper copper, yeah. um, copper miners. And we've got a story similar to that 
one we just looked at. Yeah, well, uh, oh, Freeport McMoran really, is a part of this for sure, but this is a way to get uh, diversification, you know what I mean? And this one basically looks like it's, see that yellow dot right there? That's yeah. my PHW indicator saying that's an ideal trade to go low, long, uh, short at that point. Right. Uh, as soon as it breaks out of there, 4145, that's another buy. Yeah, or it could pull back to 39 and that would be a good entry as well, huh? It could, but the Sunny Vans entry was right here, one oh, yeah. bar after that yellow dot. Yeah, no, that's yeah. ideal entry, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. That's what the Chinese stocks are looking a little bit like from the standpoint of uh, they're just starting to make their move if they can keep their legs, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Simon, uh, can you uh, take a look at some of this uh, stuff that's come out of the um, reopening story in China? Sure. Um, tell me what you want me to look at. Uh, F F up. Yeah, FXI, which is the big see caps for China. It's always nice to see screen. different analysis. You know what I mean? Sunny has her bands <laughs> and you have your own stuff and it's nice to compare. You okay, know? so tell me what you want me to start with. Uh, basically, we can start with the FXI, which is the large cap China. So this, this would be interesting to see how this closes at the end of the month. If it does, then it's the end of the down move from a, from a trend perspective. And it may be the start of a move up. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, we'll have to see how we are. I'm just looking at this time frame. Um, we failed to go back down. I mean, this was a big move up and we traded back into it and pushing higher. Uh, so look at the daily. It's hard to see that gaps every single day. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to go and we basically look at it on a weekly chart, weekly or monthly, and see what's going on. So actually, let's just take a wider look. Yeah. It's kind of, I mean, it's been basing for a long time here. We've got like, here's a top, it's kind of the bottom. We went slightly below and came back in, which is, a, which is pretty bullish. So we could make, I mean, there's potential for this to go all the way back up here again. And so depending on how it closes the month. Looks like it's starting up, but again, it could use a, a more sustained strength to really give you an idea that the turn is on, huh? Yeah, but I would know at the end of the month, I could say this is probably put in a bottom here. Yeah, and that volume uh, spike you have as it made the low there would also be coincidental that uh, that was the final flush well many times let's let's have a look at a few things here and yeah. we can start to see what's going on so okay so let's mark out that's uh, actually it's really slightly below so it's kind of this area so a lot of times when you get a move down and it kind of breaks below people start to sell on the breakdown of the lows here yeah, yeah. And that's why probably volume comes in. But on the other side of it, there's, there's probably institutional buyers buying this. And that's why you see this very often when it breaks lower and it comes back and it starts to move to the upside. Mm -hmm. So you need to, what you need to do is look left and see if there's any other level below. And we can see this level here, which is, it, it actually goes all the way up there, which is why the market's moving here. So anywhere in this bar, the market could turn around and produce a move back to the upside. So you've got to be super careful when you break levels here and you land in a level below. And that's exactly what happened here. So we'll know this will be the most likely will be the low if the market closes you know, um, this month up. And then we could see maybe a move up to this level. If it breaks this level, we've got various other levels up, maybe up to here. Right. And then maybe higher. So you could say that this is the bottom here until we until we take it out, basically. So it all, we could hold it. This will put in a bottom if we close it at the end of the month. So end of the month, uh, basically take a look at this thing and see where it's going home at. And that'd be important to you. Yeah. Yeah, how about, uh, yeah. how about that, that ride sharing thing looks awfully cheap? DD, DI, DI. So let's go, let's go to that. Let's take this. I mean, you know, a couple of bucks, boy, you can't buy a, a cup of coffee at Starbucks for a couple of bucks. Might as well buy, pick up a share. So this has had a big move today. 
and it just shot up and now it's come back probably around come back 60 percent yet yeah something like that yeah that's where it's holding now so it's kind of holding mm -hmm. this area yeah and you can also see the volume um declining on the so it's starting to look like a potential pullback here uh, can you explain what the CCI is at the bottom that people are looking at? Um, it's a commodity channel index. The only indicator I have on, uh, very rarely use it. I use it primarily for trading bases to time entries, to fine tune entries. Um, usually within a base. Uh -huh. um, so I know the direction is going to break before and I'd usually buy or sell depending on if it's going to break up or down within the base. So I use this to help time the entries and also to figure out whether we get false breakouts or bull or bear trap scenarios. So this is kind of a useful tool for that as well. You don't need it, but it can, you know, I see various patterns repeating themselves again and again. I've seen that over, you know, over the past over 10 years. So it's pretty reliable. And uh, what about this um, Las Vegas Sands, LVS? Are they going to start going to Macau and rolling dice again? What are they going to do? Let's, let's look at the bigger picture here. Huh? It's also a market that's kind of been going sideways for quite a number of years or in, in this range. Probably waiting for them to reopen and get get back over to the hotels, right? Um, Great place for it to stop, huh? This is kind of, it could go, I would, yeah, that's exactly where it's stopping around here, this area. And is that a divergence to you on the underneath, on the CCI, where the market is uh, hitting the lows there, but that CCI is certainly... Yeah, and that's a, C, that's a CCI divergence, yeah. Market makes new lows, and the CCI makes a higher low. See here. That's, not a, that's not a negative if you're bullish, right? Definitely yeah, not. but it, it's still not, I mean... That's the frustrating it's the thing. Bottom, it's it's yeah. not the bottom yet. I mean, it yeah, may yeah, not yeah. be the bottom yet. Right. It's not it's confirmed like, it, yet. It's, yeah. not, it's not confirmed at all. I mean, we're still... We still the last we still made new lows here. So um, until we take out, you know, uh, until we take out a high or go go above, say this area on the on the monthly. But if we, let's go down, and sometimes you can see on a smaller time frame. Let's go down until weekly. Weekly, this is already put in a bottom here. This ready the bottom. You can say that's the bottom for now until yeah. uh, unless we go below here. So a pullback into here may be potentially be bought. I mean, this is, you can see that pattern here is we're going lower. Every time we go up, we go lower. We go up, we go lower until here. We don't go lower here. So that's the bottom for now. Well, according to IBD, that would be a cup, but there's no handle yet. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, you need it to go like this again. <laughs> yeah, but I'm looking at pivots here primarily, and I'm looking to see, you know, if we push lower, every time we go up, we push lower, go up, push lower, go up, we don't push lower here. So that's telling me something. Doesn't mean we can't take out these lows again. If we do, we're going to make new lows again. But this is put in a bottom on this time frame for now, and this is it. So this is your line in the sand. We, we probably can go higher until we take out these lows. What about uh, the two other sectors that seem to <clears throat> have made a lot of money this year and uh, people are very, very bullish on? But let's see if there is any evidence that it might have run its course. And that would be the oil energy market. And it would all, the other one would be the agricultural fertilizer market. So um, give me a symbol. I'll give you the symbol on the oil. Uh, we'll use uh, XLE. Just give us, a, you know, that's half of it is Exxon and Mobil. So this is going up, obviously. Oil's going up. So everything, all the oil stocks will be going up. And we're almost at almost at the highest set, it looks very likely we're going to get up here to 100 area. Right. And at that point, and then we have to see monitor, what happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have to see yeah. what happens. Yeah. And if you're uh, looking at that same thing on crude light at CL, we're going up to 125. It's at 118 yeah, right at, now. Let's look at, let's look at oil. Yeah. All features here. The, the high is, was 131 uh, on the on the last move up. So uh, and then the high for 2008 was 147. So those are the two big. Yeah, there you go. 
So there's there. your two so, uh, things there, yeah. So so this is where we're probably going up here. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, this is this is still this is still bullish. Mm. Yeah, we went, we took out this whole area here, and we we get this spike up into this kind of drop and came down, but now we're going back up again. It's very bullish. Mm. And uh the fact that we're not, you know, if it was gonna go down, it should have gone down here. It tried and failed. So that means yeah. we're going up. So I think you know we're going to see some higher prices in oil. Which what is, do you think uh, of that? Are you on the chart you just said. What does it mean to you when the wick is that long and that brief? This one, or it depend, it depend, This one. The one that went this to one thirty-one. That's a, it's a very long wick and a very brief time. So what does that tell you? Anything? Yeah, it tells you that that this. I mean, from here in our trading room, yeah, we said do not sell oil at this level. It's going to go through it, <laughs> and it did. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have yeah, well, that that probably have their that. stops on the other side, and this is the right road. The stops you can see from here to here, and then you look at the if you look at the distance, it does equal up for, from Which below shows you that Ukraine to here and to above. So more than likely, these stops were being run. So once so. Who's on the other side of the stop? There's probably institutional traders taking the short side, which is why it comes back down, and they're buying it back down here again. So they're selling up here to take the other side of those um, the, the, the um, people who are being stopped out. There's people that are selling this level again, and I would never sell it this time. Over here, yes, but not this time. Yeah, there's no, there's no evidence. So. There's no evidence of a turn up here yet. No, not to the downside. Definitely not. Not yet. Let's uh, turn to the uh, agriculture fertilizer. There's three stocks, basically. I thought all three of them looked like they might have peaked, but I don't know. Uh, ADM, okay. Archer Daniels Midland. The other one is CF Industries, and the other one's Mosaic. So let's take a look. Okay, one at a time. So yeah. what's the symbol for CF? CFI? CF. 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 And the other one is Mosaic MOS. Okay, so, so we're, we're in this. We're, we're going to probably range between here and here. This is like two bar structure. The market tried to come up, got knocked down, tried to go down and came back up and we're kind of around here again. So the market's going to test the lows here and test. And then if it doesn't break, it will go back and probably test here. If it breaks here, we're going to go down. If it, if it goes above here, we'll go, we'll go up. And this is like, looks like all time highs here. Yeah. That's a monthly chart, Simon? Yeah, monthly chart. Okay. My, so, my uh, chart says we're going up. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think, I mean, generally this structure is going to kind of, it'll probably chop around in this range. It's a big enough range. You can trade it from here yeah. to here. Australia announced today they're going to have a bumper uh, crop of wheat, which uh, might put a damper on this a little bit. But, uh, you know, with weather being such a variant, you never know what you're going to get on, on yield, you know? Mm -hmm. what, what were the other ones? Uh, the other one was CF Industries, uh, CF CF. I mean, some of these seems like they, you know, they've run out a little bit of steam anyway. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, not too interesting. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's also setting up for sideways chop. Yeah. Which is probably what we're getting. We're, we're going to stay in this range for the um, time being. Course, it looks like we're going down another five points. And we could go down if we break below here. Well, no, by the end of the month, I mean, we could still go below here. If we, if we close a month in this, in the range of the previous month, then, you know, this is going to be, if we can go above here or below there, we'll decide where we go next. And uh, Mosaic yeah. is MOS. Because these have had very big moves, and I'm sure people would probably like to get an idea if it's the party over, or is it a pause to refresh? And that's the big question on these things. Again, this is the range that we're in. You can see that and put it over here and you'll see it across all the time frames. So uh, until we go out of this range, that's what we're going to be in. We're going to trade in this range until, until we go one way or the other. And that probably may stay until they find out what the yield is from all the grains this, uh, this summer. Yeah. And, yeah. and if, so the, the, if the yields come in surprisingly high, then you know maybe uh, that'll be the... The uh, straw that breaks the back, if it comes in uh, light, uh, could be, uh, let's go back to the highs, huh? Yeah. 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 Sonny, so is there what, any other... What saying, um, mm -hmm. Well, let me show you this. What, what we're saying before is very interesting is this. Remember, we, this is the move up that we said. 
remember a few weeks ago, it was three weeks ago, uh, one, two, three, was it three weeks ago? Whatever it was, we said we were moving up from here. You remember, this is a weekly chart, yeah? So look where we went up to. I said, we're going up probably to this area and look what happened. We turned like, but if you get a bar like this that takes out three weeks, <laughs> we're going lower. And this is, this is going to be, this has potential to go much lower because there's, here's the move down, here's the pause. We're going to get another move down that looks like this. That's what could happen potentially. Now, since so, we have the uh, currencies up there, um, and so basically your, your view is that the yen uh, definitely has a little more slipping to do. Uh, well, it's at all-time lows uh, right. over the past 20 years. So, And there's nothing. I, and I did say, I think a few weeks ago, if it does go up, it's not a move that's going to be sustained. I mean, right. unless it, it's just a move up to go lower. It's just a pause in the, in the down move. A little short covering, we, something like that. Uh, yeah, maybe people taking profit. Maybe people think it's a great time to buy, but all-time lows. you know. Yeah. But uh, unless it got back above this area, this area, but it didn't. You see how it, where it went back to? It, it barely got there. And you can see the market was moving in a bullish manner over here until, until here. Once this bar closed here, we failed to go above here and we're on the short side. Once this bar closed, you want to be on the sell side on this, on this day. And there's your first target, second target. And notice how we bounce up here from this level and then we break. Sure, sure. Since we're on the currency situation, I have been hearing uh, talk of the Aussie going to 76. Any price evidence that would uh, indicate that that's the case? Okay. Aussie up here. You're thinking back up to 76. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. Looks like it's it on its way be. a little bit, huh? Yeah. 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 We took out this level and this is pretty bullish. We have to hold this level on the daily chart. So this is potentially a viable pullback. It may it has to turn over the next day or so. If if it does, we could get back to this level, uh -huh. and then it may. If it's still bullish, it may dip a bit, and then up to the seventy six area, which is here. You know, if the whole yeah. world is short of grain, and you uh, sound, uh, sound the alarm that you've got a bumper crop, that could help the country quite a bit right off that, huh? Sure could. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah the so other side to it. The other mm -hmm. side, if we take out these lows, well, yeah, that, then it then it's not going up. It's going yeah, so down. you got a line right. in the sand. You always need a line in the sand on any idea, and so your line on that's around the seventy-one and change area, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is maybe a message or uh, um, to to everyone out there, anyone listening to this, um, from a trading perspective, what you need to do is have a plan of action, because we don't know what the market's going to do until it does it. Yeah, we know what the odds are, but we, it still may not play out according to the exactly. odds. Yeah. Yeah. So and what you need yeah. to do is have a plan of action of what you're going to do, because we don't have control over the market. We have control over ourselves. So we have to have a plan of action, depending on if the market does A, we're going to do this. If the market does B, we're going to do that. And then let the market play out. Yeah. The market does, market's going to do one of them. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have a plan of what you're doing. So you don't need to know what the market is going to do to make money consistently trading. You just need to know what you're going to do. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Sonny, I'd like to throw it over to you uh, before we run out of time and get your idea on the price of gold. Oh, <clears throat> gold. I love gold. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, it's been hanging on that 1800 number and um, uh, the uh, mining stocks are trying to hang, like on GDX is trying to hang on to this 30, uh, 30 to 32 number. And oh, I've got what to say on gold as well afterwards at this time. Yeah. And I've got the gold futures on my chart here. Yeah. And we need to pop up just a little bit to this line that I've yeah. got drawn there at uh, yeah. 1895. Right. To show any bullishness again, we've got that yellow dot over on the left and we've got a flat dynamic moving average right here that is trying to break through and hasn't. Right. I don't know why, but I do think gold's going to go above 2000 again. It's strange that it hasn't considering the world strife that we are exhibiting here. It's very it's strange. Very yeah. thing, but, uh, you know, I think that that was uh, the feeling that maybe Bitcoin was going to take the place of gold, but it hasn't and isn't, and at least yet. Why don't so you throw? Why don't you throw? Uh, by the way, why don't you throw up while you're there? Uh, GBTC, and uh, because that is starting to get quite a bit of legs, as, as well as Ethereum. And is it time to take a bite of um, of the uh, Bitcoin? <laughs> it was up five. It was up five. It was up five percent earlier today, but I don't know what it's doing now. Yeah, it goes up and down and up and down. But yeah. uh, GTC is—it has to break this dynamic moving average before it's going to go up. 
If it can't break that level at right at twenty one fifty something dollars, right around yeah, there, yeah, yeah, then it's got more room on the downside. Yeah. But uh, I'm see, it's got a lot. I call them attractors. It's got a lot of resistance right there overhead. And if it goes up, then you know we're looking at 34, 33, right in there, from 20 to 30 ish. So both so Bitcoin and both Bitcoin and gold, uh, you know, are worth a watch, but maybe a little bit more proof of concept, huh? Yeah, or or a little bit fear and abandoning it because it didn't go screaming up to 70 or 80,000. Right. Here's Bitcoin itself and we're down around 31,340 right now. Yeah. Which is but, better than the 26, 28, no, 25 that it was at for a while. Right, so it's right. gone up, but it needs to go up a lot more. I'm sure and, if, and I, I'm sure if the NASDAQ makes a big turn in the summer and all this inflation breaks and the rates back off and, uh, happy days are here again. That'd probably be the catalyst for the thing to get going. Uh, so it's probably very dependent upon uh, also uh, how that NASDAQ does, because they seem to be trading pretty close. Um, so the I'm longest real- time it was it was counter to the S&P. So they right. were running opposite each other. And now they're pretty much running the same. Yeah, they, they have nothing to do with store value anymore. Um, right. with uh, regard- Bitcoin seems to do well on uh, election years as well. Presidential okay. mostly, but... Uh- Midterms hmm. might uh, might help might help a little move too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Simon, real quick, jump in and just uh, you wanted to add uh, a couple of uh, oh, yeah, thoughts gold. on yeah, gold. So let me, and, uh, let me uh, take the screen. Give you again. some time, guys, to uh, explain to people what you guys do. And everything. Let's do this again. Okay. Uh, sil- silver t- silver today tried to get going, but then it gave up the boat a little bit. So th- this is this is very critical. Put all leveling gold this level here. Now, if you look on the weekly chart, this is this is your line in the sand. If gold trade trades below the low of this bar, it's going down. If it trades above here, we could go back up to the two thousand. So, I think. I mean, we'll see how it trades at the moment. We're trading down today, yeah. and if we break this level and end up the week below here, I think we're going down. And yep. if we go down, there's a possibility. If you look on the weekly sh- on the monthly chart, I think the reason why I think we're probably going more down than up again is, um, well, it we'll, we'll see. If we take out these lows, then it may take out this area as well, and we could go yep. all the way back down to fifteen hundred. That could be where we end up as well, which is kind of, yeah. The only thought that would come to my mind is is that they're going to win the inflation war. Real estate's going to back off 15 or 20 percent. The grains are going to roll over because they start making grain. Something's going to happen in the energy market to create some supply. And then all of a sudden, there's a deflationary thing going on. And that might be the... the uh, shall we say whack at the back Catal- of the head for catalyst. gold. Yeah, that might be the cat. <laughs> yeah. That might very well be the catalyst, and that's not a far fetched yeah. idea because things yeah. do so, change. You know. So, so, so this is it. So, if it holds this area or hold trades back above here, then we're going back to twenty uh, to two thousand. If we go below here, then we go down probably to eighteen thousand and see what happens down there. Yeah, gold's that's, been around uh, for ten thousand years, and it's probably smart enough to not second guess the Fed when they say they're going to fight inflation and bring it down. You know, that's maybe why it's not going up because it's not uh, it's it's been around long enough to know don't don't fight the Fed, right? Yeah. And this is also this is a very critical level on Bitcoin, is here, the top yeah. of this bar. If we go above here, Bitcoin's going back up. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, um, we're just chopping around in this range at the moment. And if we don't go up, then we could see twenty thousand and potentially even lower. We could see it going down. If it can't get back above this area and takes a nosedive, it could easily get down to 20,000. Well, this was the poster child of the big run up, uh, and it'll probably, it could be the poster child of the, um, of the settling back down. So it's, I mean, I'm looking at it like this. If you look at this move and the pullback and then this move, so look at it the other way. Here's a move down, there's the move up that failed to take us to new highs. So we have another move down that should equal this move. We should have an equal equal move, which would take us down to around twenty thousand. There was a phenomenon in the two thousand big run up uh, on a company called JDS Uniphase, and they everybody used to say JDS stands for just don't sell. <laughs> I think <laughs> some of you remember. Do you remember JDS? Yeah, yeah. Don't give away my age here. 
And uh, what, I mean, like I say, the, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know what I mean? It's true. Every every bull good. every bull run has their dog, you know. And uh, <laughs> definitely, Bitcoin was the dog in the last five ten years, no doubt about it. But I think it's just a matter of time. I think it's a good, um, maybe a good investment long term. Yeah, yeah. If you buy, I think it's good to probably buy and hold um, Bitcoin itself long term. Yeah. Well, we'll have so to see how that's cheaper future. prices is a good thing. Yeah. All right, we got a few minutes left. We're going to start out with Sunny Harris, a money mentor, and she's going to tell us all the wonderful things that are going to happen when you contact her. What's going on, Sunny? Well, uh, let's see. I'm a mathematician, trader, and programmer. I've been a professional trader for 41 years. I do mentoring and consulting and programming for people. Anybody that wants to try out their trading ideas, uh, I help them do that. I'm author of seven best-selling books about trading. I publish a free sunny side of the street newsletter every Sunday night and a free live trading room on Tuesday mornings. So just send me an email, sunny at moneymentor.com and let me know what you'd like to see. Yeah. And you have any questions for Sunny on any specifics, you know, a contact her by email or phone and let her know what your questions and problems are. And she can help you work through them because we can't even put up my phone number here. Cause I love to have, I love to chat with traders. Sure. There you go. Oops, press enter, not slash. There you go. All right, so there you got all ways to contact her and uh, go over all the stuff that's on your mind. Um, Simon, you. again, um, how can people get a hold of you? And uh, Simon, there was somebody who had a question yeah. um, for you <laughs> on uh, your, uh, do you use Fibonacci levels or moving averages to influence your analysis? No, uh, don't use Fibonacci, don't use okay. moving averages. I, I use supply and demand uh, by looking at the charts and understanding where those levels are primarily. I use measured moves as well when you, you know, looking at the symmetry of the market. Okay. All right. So when people get a hold of you, you know, uh, what are they going to be able to learn more and how can you help them? Yeah. So you can go to my website here and if you click over here, get started now, you can put in your email and uh, you can learn how to build a profitable trading strategy. It's a 15 minute video, whatever will teach you how to start to go about doing that. Um, yeah, it's free and you can be on my mailing list and, you know, we usually do free webinars once a month. And uh, again, we have a YouTube channel as well and you can probably get there, I think over here my website just click on there to take you to my youtube channel and again go and watch some videos of previous uh free events that i've done and to give you an idea of what we do and if you've been trading for a number of years and you haven't had success and you want to really master reading the market and find yourself find something that works for you in the market then this is the right place to come if you're looking for, you know, someone else to build you a strategy and, uh, and um, you know, then that's something else. So if, if you're looking to build your own strategy and that from the ground up, that will give you a positive expectancy and will make money over time. If you follow it, and you go through the whole process and system, then this is for you. Um, self, self, bit, self-reliance is always a good idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. We build uh, self-reliant trade. All, all of our successful traders, they're all different. Yeah. And they all trade different styles, but within the, we, we all are trading um, within the same framework and we use the same process, but different styles. So you can, within that framework, you know, there's a framework, for example, uh, give you another example, if you're an engineer or an architect, yeah, um, there, there's many different or interior designer. I mean, there's not one way of doing it, but you have to understand the basic principles and then you have to work within them to make sure that your building's not going to fall down, you know? Sure. You have to, but you, you can kind of develop your own style within that framework. So you have to have the framework and process in place. And then within there, you find yourself. And then that's the most exhilarating thing for most people is to express themselves in the market, to find something that they develop that works for them. And sure. I found that to be the most successful way of developing yourself as a trader rather than being spoon fed from someone else or because you're never, you're never going to get that level of independence. And in order to be a successful trader long-term, you need to be independent. Sure. 
Okay, well, great, guys. Uh, as far as optionprofessor.com is concerned, uh, again, we do have a uh, weekly market update on all the markets that we send out. And also we have a PDF report on how to hedge downside risk in the market, as well as upside surprises. And that PDF report's very informative. So if you go to optionprofessor.com, uh, put your email in. We'll, we'll talk to you about how to get this information in front of you. Okay, um, Sonny and Simon, SNS. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Sonny and Simon. Uh, thank you guys for being with us today. And it's always great. And I'm going to turn it back over to David. Hey, thanks, thank David. you, Jim. David. Yeah, great, great show today. So uh, just a quick reminder uh, for everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. And you can also just go to timingresearch.com. And the uh, post at the top of the page will be the archive for today, uh, as soon as I can get it posted. And I uh, just want to thank my guests again for today, Simon Klein of TradeSmartForex.com, Sonny Harris of MoneyMentor.com, and the Option Professor of OptionProfessor.com. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, David. Thanks, David.